What's up YouTube, I'm just another guy and welcome back to my rise to fame. So here we are Chelsea, the 3rd of March, we're a little bit later than I anticipated but the reason we are back a little bit later than I anticipated is because we have the Capital One Cup final today. Yes, we have a chance to win some more silverware with Chelsea. I'm very excited, the game is against Manchester City, uh, it should be a good one. And it does mean we've got quite a few fixes to go through, quite a few things to update you with. And also we've got a bit of transfer news to talk about, something I didn't really have, um, didn't really anticipate but sort of just happened. So... To start off, we're going to talk about my person. I've got a coaching badge. I've got a new coaching badge. Now, Continental A, I could get a Continental Pro license, but I did ask and the board turned me down. They said they need me right now. So, at the end of the season, I'll ask to get that. And then, hopefully, I can get my, I think the max is Continental Pro. I believe that's the max license you can get. So, you know, hopefully, I'll get my max coaching license and then that'll be all good. And, um, you know, it'll be help my, help my guys' stats and stuff. So, yeah, let's talk about competitions. I think it's the best screen we can go on. There's no news with Brazil as well. Uh, something I just recognize, or something I recognized after my, um, before I recorded the previous one for this video, you know, because I had four games to update you with Brazil, uh, is that Brazil don't actually play games sort of in the winter months. Um, so with last I see them in November and then we start again in June and I have all my games from June up until the end of the year. Then I have a break. Then it's June to the end of the year. So, um, I quite like the way that works. I mean, I, I can't range your friendlies. I can't, arrange any friendlies in that time period either but I think that's all right because what it allows me to do is it allows me just to focus on Chelsea during the sort of important stage of the season and the end stage and also it means that Brazilian players don't have to fly out to Brazil and get tired and stuff when I quite when I need them and that's helpful because of course Oscar is one of my best players in the team so that's good news for me but yeah let's go into the competitions it's the best screen to give you an overview of how we're doing so let's do let's do that so in the Premier League, we're currently top of the tables by two points on Manchester on Everton, but we do have two games in hand. So if we were to win them two games in hand, we could possibly grow the gap out to eight points. So we're looking pretty good in the Premier League. Um, Everton have surprisingly kept up pace with us. Something I didn't recognise or realise anyway until I actually played Everton was that um, Pep Guardiola is in charge. Or Joseph Guardiola is, is there, is there. But yeah, Pep's in charge. And now Pep previously was, of course, at um, Arsenal. I mentioned this um, briefly before. Uh, he uh, he was Arsenal's manager and he didn't actually do very well. He got sacked and was recent. I didn't realize he was employed by Everton, like I said, until we played them. So yeah, he's he's completely different manager in charge there. He's managing to get a lot out of people like Izzy Brown, who has been on form this season. So yeah, Everton are doing really well. Man, you have come back this second, uh, come back during the middle stage of the season. I haven't seen you in. They've really grown into themselves in this um, stage. The manager or the new manager has really started to get the team working together. So they're up into third. Arsenal up in fourth as well, doing pretty well. Uh, Liverpool have slipped way down the table. They find themselves down, all the way down in eighth. Sammy Hoopier is actually under some pressure and could be getting sacked. I'm actually surprised at how low they are. Man City are not doing well today, but I meant uh, not doing well in the league. But I mentioned they've got a cup final. Uh, Jose Mourinho in charge of them, not having the best of time in the league. Obviously, he was the last at Chelsea, and uh, he didn't have the best of times in the league there. So they really want to get this win today and really want to build up morale and boost morale, make them push on and try and go for other competitions and push on trying go over the Premier League so we're going to do our best to try and stop that uh, Fulham are doing really poorly as well they're not they're not doing well uh, Brendan Rodgers is again under huge huge pressure at that club to try and turn it around because at the start of the season they were in the Champions League now they didn't actually get past the Champions League uh, qualifying they got knocked out by Schalke and in the group stages of the Europa League they've got through there in the second knockout round against Southampton so um, yeah, Fulham are not doing well. Southampton actually are not doing very well. They're, they've let themselves down. They're down his 17th. Mark Warburton has got to be questioning whether he's going to get sacked or not as well. So there's a lot of pressure in the team. A lot of people are underperforming. A lot of people are overperforming as well. Um, most notably to me, I think Aston Villa are doing incredibly well. Wigan as well. Um, got to be noticed. Leicester as well. So a lot of very good teams in there. Uh, West Brom up until recently were struggling. At one point, they were 10 points behind the team in 17th. They were dead last. Uh, they've ended up changing their manager. Oh, they didn't change their manager. Sorry. Um, was Dean Smith in charge of West Brom when I played them? I honestly can't remember. But Dean Smith, either way, has done a great job and has turned it around. So, uh, yeah, you know, Swansea, uh, Swansea are struggling as well. They really are. Uh, they've already sacked their manager. And the thing is, I kind of feel sorry. Um, oh, no, yeah, the Wigan, yeah, not doing well. Sorry. West Brom, I was going to say, because they were bottom of the table and I felt kind of sorry for them because 
I sold them, my goalkeeper. Our backup goalkeeper, Will Gill, we sold them for 7.5 million and then we played them and just destroyed them. And I was like, yeah, 7.7 .7 was probably a little bit too much. Anyway, in the Champions League, we're in the first knockout round. We've got Besiktas, probably the easiest team we could have got. So that was a great draw for us. We're currently winning based on the first leg as well. So that should be us through to the quarterfinals of the Champions League. FA Cup wise, we're in the sixth round. We've got Arsenal, couldn't really get a bigger game. Um, surprisingly, the press conference after we got this draw, they actually said it was an easy draw for me against Arsenal. Now, I think that's very insulting to Arsenal, so I kind of backpedaled on that. Um, I went, hey, you can't say that about Arsenal. It's going to be a tough game. No game if, no game if, uh, no, f uh, no football match is a certainty. Um, but yeah, I'm surprised they said it was an easy draw because they're fourth in the Premier League table. I mean, bloody hell, Watson hard draw them for us. You know, if that's an easy draw, I can't, I, can, I didn't understand the logic. But it's a repeated FA Cup semi final. It's the sixth round though. Um, but yeah, we're at home. We've got that advantage. So hopefully we can, I think we're at home. Uh, but anyway, we've got that, uh, yeah, we are at home. So we've got that advantage, so that should be good. Uh, but yeah, that's that's mostly what I need to go through. So let's go on to this Premier League table quickly and just give you maybe a bit more of an overview. Uh, having a really good year yet again, scoring a lot of goals, the most goals scored in the league by quite a margin, by nine goals. Conceding-wise, we are improving. We were quite poor, so we were quite poor. We were like the seventh or eighth um, least conceded goals in the, in the t um, table. But as you can see, like I say, we're getting a little bit better at that. Courtois has kept 11 clean sheets. For the first time since I've been here, Courtois has been on that top. Sorry if there's a cut, I sneezed. <laughs> but yeah, he's been on that top clean sheet list for the first time since I've been here. So that's good. It shows defensively we are getting stronger. We are improving. Eden Hazard is top goal scorer only by one goal. But it still means Eden Hazard's having a great year. If you can see the top rated players, you see four incredible players in there. Marcus Parker, Oscar Eden Hazard and John Umbelli, who is... Been a completely different player this season. Last year, he really struggled and really made me question the money I spent on him. And I'm, I gave him another year and said, if he doesn't perform this year, if he has another season like last year, this year, I'm probably going to sell him. But my God, he's a completely different player. He's an absolute animal. And you can see stats are improving because of it. He's playing well. He's getting better and stronger as a player. And I really love this guy. I think he's going to be an absolute world-class player in the future. Parker is continue to be brilliant as well. Just absolutely great from the younger left attacking midfielder. Going to be a, a Chelsea legend, no doubt, in the future. Only 23. Got plenty of years left in him. Oscar, we've had a little bit of falling out of Oscar because of some transfer news that I've got to talk about. But he yet again questioned the depth of the squad. And he, he was the player that the last time. And he's done it again this time. There's no bloody option. That says, listen, we're producing, we're bringing through youth players, so I'm not worried about the squad depth because the youth is the depth. There's no option like that. I want to use that option. But I think the reason that I keep getting these problems of people coming forward and, for example, you know, Oscar's saying we've not got a squad, but, uh, good enough depth. And, uh, I've constantly have people coming forward and moaning about first team football. For example, Ryan Gould, who has played more league games in this single league season for me than he has in the previous three league seasons with two of them with Arsenal and one of them with Liverpool put together. And he's moaning about first-team football. And I'm thinking, that doesn't make sense. Based on your track record, you shouldn't moan about first-team football. But it's because of my stats. It's because of my level of discipline and my man management. If these were higher, players wouldn't be coming out and questioning me. But because they're so low, I, it allows people like Oscar to come forward. But apart from that, despite Oscar's, you know, a little bit of a moan with me and stuff, he's still putting in a, an incredible year. And it, in fact, probably playing a little bit better than he was last year. So, um... Oscar's being great, and Oscar's just being Oscar, an absolute beast. Hazard's not having as good as a year as he did last year, but I think last year was is probably going to be, and will always be, his best season with the club. I don't think he's ever going to beat that. He's 33 now. He's um, His stats are going down. He's he's getting worse as a player. Uh, one thing I should mention is Oscar and Courtois both got new contracts. Oscar will stay here until he's 35. And But with Eden Hazard, I didn't really give him that because I, with Oscar, I can see myself sort of pushing him back into centre mid maybe or always keeping him in that centre attacking mid role. But with Hazard, he's always a winger. And with winger, you sort of need your physicals and stuff. So I'm not too sure if Hazard's going to be able to play here for too much longer. But, you know, as long as he's performing, for example, this year, it may not be as good as it was last year, but it still is a fantastic record to have. And like I say, if he's still top goal scorer in the Premier League, clearly he's having a good year. I mean, I can't expect 40 goals every season. And Mbele already showed you. So, yeah, it's been a really good year. Really, really good year in the Premier League. And we have been on form. But I'm going to talk about the transfers now. I'm going to talk about the bill of action that did take place. So... Uh, Outwise, we've loaned a lot of people out and stuff. Once we entered January, we sold Juan Fernando Quintero for, uh, for 3.7 million. So we made a very healthy profit on the signing. And he hadn't, he wasn't really in the team at all this year. He'd been on, he started a few games in the cup and, uh, and in Europe. But, um, 
Yeah, Juan Fernando, uh, Juan Fernando, uh, Fernando Quintero just... I decided to completely dropping out the team with Gould coming in and me pushing through the youngsters. There was no real place for him in the team. I even put Murphy, you know, a name you probably don't recognise at all from me saying it. But yeah, Murphy was... Um, is a is a young left attacking mid who I have occasionally sent out on loan this season. For example, right now, um, he was sent out on loan to Swindon earlier on. But yeah, even I considered Murphy ahead of him in terms of pecking order. So I really needed to get rid of him. He wasn't particular. Uh, he wouldn't. He didn't. He didn't moan. In all honesty, he didn't really moan. He didn't come forward and say, "Look, I'm not happy about my lack of first team football." But I felt it was only fair that I got rid of him. So 3.7 million. Uh, we released our backup keeper that we signed earlier on in the year on a free transfer. Decided I didn't really need him anymore. Uh, he wasn't happy about his lack of first team football yet again. That's because of my stat as a manager. But yeah, he left and I wasn't, again, I'm, I'm happy with that. And sort of the big signing to go, the big thing to leave was Luis Salsos. Now, I know I only signed him last year and I, I did sell him on for a profit. Uh, I sold him on for five million pound profit, although 10 million pound of this 30 million is going to come over the next two years, which, isn't exactly the same as 30 million up front now. If any of you do sort of economics or finance or anything like that, you'll understand that, you know, money now is worth more than money in the future. So, you know, it's not the same, but it's still uh, the money we've spent on him originally was also spread over a few clauses and stuff. So, you know, it's not like we've spent all of that up front. But yeah, basically, the reason I got rid of him was because he had, in one of our fixtures, we were absolutely shocking. And something I noticed with Saltos, for even last year, he was a bit on-off. He was very, um, he, he was very mistake-prone. And this year, I just wasn't happy with his level of football. And like I say, he had a really bad game. I fined him two weeks' wages for it. He spoke out and said, look, I'm not, I'm not acceptable with this. You can't be finding me. And I'm like, mate, I'm setting an example of you. If you perform like that, if you, if you put in an effort like that and put in a shift like that for the shirt, for the badge, for the people that pay your wages. If that if that's the kind of performance you're putting in, then you don't deserve the wages. So I find him two weeks, one week for that bad performance, and two weeks for the fact that he wasn't playing well at all in the season in um in over recent form either. So like I say, we had a falling out. It was it was about I thought, yep, I'm just gonna try and get rid of him. So what we did is I I looked out there, looked at centre backs and right backs and thought, right, who can we get? And I noticed Mohamed um Ndei. A 21 year old Senegal international was having and is have was is having a fantastic year this year for Leon he's put in three very or two very consistent years he was putting in his third consistent year for Leon and I thought yeah I'm going to go in for this guy 7.82 rating as right back that's great he's come in so far and been even better 8.05 he's picked up a player of the month award and he's only been here for one month so in day he looks like an absolute beast and the reason we did sign a right back as well with in day is because um with Stones, Stones is quite a big man, quite a tall right back, and he was our right back, of course, for, from since I've been here until now. Uh, but with Stones, I feel he's very, very capable of playing centre back. So Stones will move into the centre to play alongside Maurice, our other centre back, and Undei can move out to the right. So those are the main, those are the main transfers. We do have one other transfer to talk about, and it's Forgan Hazard. Now this one's a pretty strange one, and I didn't do it just for the sake of signing another Hazard or anything like that. Basically, Eden Hazard came up to me and said, I'm I'm homesick. Now, for those who can remember, Azpilicueta said the same thing a few years ago. And I sort of can't understand it. I sort of didn't understand it, I should say, anyway. Because I was like, you've spent 12 seasons at a club. I think you spent 12 years at the club, Eden Hazard. Why are you all of a sudden now homesick? This should be considered your home. You've spent probably a third of your life here. Probably even, yeah, probably over a third of your life here. This should be considered a home to you. I just couldn't understand it. But then as I fought on, I thought, well, maybe he's reached that time in his career now where he'd rather play closer to his natural home, play closer to Belgium, play maybe even France or something, where somewhere he speaks a natural, his natural language. So I could sort of understand it. He said, it, I said, look, if I can bring someone else in, um, you know, someone you'll be happy with or someone you're close with would you be good with that and he said yeah so i didn't really know who to go for I, did, I was sort of like do i bring in someone that speaks french for hazard do i bring in a belgian for hazard i was sort of like what do i do so i went on eden hazard's um information if you didn't know you could do this you go on information and you can see sort of favorite personnels that go through his um throughout his career and stuff and i noticed um that despite his youngest brother uh, keelan hazard not actually um, I think he must have retired. But Thorgan Hazard was without a club and he'd been released from PSV. And I thought, yeah, look, we'll bring Thorgan in. We'll bring his brother in, two brothers together. That'll keep him happy. Thorgan signed, pretty cheap deal, you know, small wage fee. Um, 
He's already he's played only once for us. He played in the FA Cup. Did really well in that game, but he only played once for us. He won't really play too much for Gun Hazard. I just hope he doesn't really moan about his lack of first team football. But yeah, it kept Eden Hazard happy. So that's good. You know, two Hazards and one of them, the important one, is very pleased with it. So yeah, those are the transfers. Nothing else we're going to talk about on this screen. So let's go into our schedule and let's have a look at where we, where, how we've been. So we lost to Manchester City last time I saw you. And it was really important that we responded in a positive light. Now we didn't get off to the best of starts. We did beat Wigan 3-2, but it was thanks to a 89th minute winner from Eden Hazard. And the fact is, we were 2-1 uh, down at one point and you know, that wasn't great. You know, that, that was the last thing I expected after, um, cause I expected an instant, rep instant response after the City game. Very fortunate to get the 3 2 win there. Next up, we had Aston Villa, and this time again, it was another shocking game. Despite Oscar getting two goals in pretty quick succession and giving us a 2 1 lead, having fallen 1 0 behind, we gave away a sloppy penalty very late on. Adam Maurice actually gave away the penalty, and in the 85th minute, Aston Villa equalized and were able to hold on for a point. So, another disappointing game. So, what I decided was for the Sevilla match, I would rest up my starting 11 I would play my second team and then for the um, Tottenham game we'd go out there attacking with the first team who should be fresh and raring to go didn't really work out that way uh, it did work out that way sort of we beat Sevilla 3-0 in the last game of the group both of us were already through both of us knew we were first and second so there was nothing to play for it was just sort of a token game I ended up playing players that represented that you know Fernando Quintero started Danny Murphy started his first ever game for the club and also scored two goals in his first ever game for the clubs which is great uh, Maurice played Ferreira played Ferreira was banned from the Tottenham match which is why he played. Maurice was playing in this match due to his poor performance in the Villa match. I thought he, I thought he had something to prove, so I played him. Uh, we had hoping goals, Scorefield, um, Sydney played, Pierce played, Gould played. Like I say, a lot of just rotated teams, and the three 0 victory was great. But then coming up against Tottenham again, we just we weren't really great. It was it was just a sort of yeah performance from the team. It just wasn't enough to get us three points, and that disappointed me. So, it, going into the quarter-final, confidence wasn't particularly high from me. Since the City game, we hadn't really played well, apart from the Sevilla match. But like I say, that was, I weren't really counting that. If anything, that was sort of just a friendly match. <laughs> because it was that, it just, that, that much was a, you know, there was nothing on the line. It was that much of a get, it was that poor of a game, really. So yeah, going up against Swansea, finally we responded and finally we looked back, um, or started playing the way we had been playing throughout the season beyond, um, before the City defeat. So Parker, Hazard, Oscar and Gel, all got the goals we want. Um, all got the goals and helped us go on to win the game and put us through to the Capital One Cup semi-final, which was great. And then we continued on a very nice run of football. So Everton was next, and Everton was a very important game. They were second in the table at the time. We beat them one 0 We dominated them from start to finish. They only had one shot all game, zero shots on target. We limited them brilliantly, and it was a perfect game from us. Could have scored more, should have scored more, but a win is a win. And how you know how dominant we were based on match stats, and how dominant we were throughout the game was beautiful. Uh, next up was Fulham. We beat them 2-1. Again, great game. Local rivals. Always nice to beat them, especially away from home. Marcus Parker and Oscar getting us the win with their two goals. Oscar's goals ended up being the winner. Parker assisted that goal as well um, in one of his Man of the Match performances. West Ham was next to me 1-1-0. Again, another game that we were really dominant in. Probably should have scored more. In fact, we had the chances to score a lot more, but we didn't take them. And Pe but Parker's goal in the end was enough to win us the game. And plus the 81st minute sending off just killed the game off if there was any chance of West Ham trying to come back late on. Reading next, we beat them 3-0. Very comfortable performance. Again, as you'd expect from us, uh, very nice. I played a few rotated people up in here as well. So that was good. Uh, then we came up against Liverpool in the FA Cup. And this game was beautiful. We played so well in this match. that We scored... Okay... To get us underway, it was an own goal. But if the defender hadn't been there, if the defender hadn't hadn't touched it, I'm sure John Claude Caber, who was coming up from behind him, from a uh, cross from the, I believe it was the right hand side, the cross was coming in from, and just sort of hit the defender's head and went in his own goal. But like I say, Caber was there, and he probably would have headed it in if not. So we started off great, 41st minute, getting a goal just before half time. That meant we could go on and try and get the, um, you know, kill the game off if we wanted to. But we didn't. We just didn't take the chances again until the 81st minute, and Dylan Parker scored. But even though we weren't taking the chances, we were just so dominant, so in control of the match, total control. And the thing is, for this match, Courtois was actually out. He was ill. Uh, he was out of an illness, like a flu or something. So it kept him out for a week. So Reese Hope had to come in and Liverpool just didn't test him. They had two really good opportunities. One of them was just such a tamed effort, such a pathetic effort from Takoni, who is such a great striker. He constantly scores against us. I'm surprised. And another one, they hit the crossbar. So... Um, Reese Hope was maybe a little bit fortunate, but 
it was probably Reese Hope's biggest game, and he's only 16 years old, this guy, so a lot of pressure was on his shoulder, and they just never tested him. I think that's a credit to the defence and the midfield for helping us win the battle, and yeah, just a great performance. But then came the 6-1 defeat. Now, again, Reese Hope had to play in this game because Courtois' illness was still around, but... I will not accept this result. This result was is the worst I've seen us probably. Yeah, it's probably worse than the, the Real Madrid defeat last season. Maybe it felt worse. It felt worse. Maybe the Madrid performance last year, we the performance was a lot worse. But this felt just felt wrong. It just felt dirty. And it's not because it's Newcastle. And it's not you know I've got nothing against Newcastle or anything. It's just because. We should never have lost this game 6-1. We just come off an incredible 2-0 victory against Liverpool. Where Liverpool hardly had a sniff. And Liverpool were playing better than Newcastle. So to find ourselves 2-0 down in the first 20 minutes of the match was baffling to me. And when when we got one back at half, to, uh, just before half time, I thought, great, we'll go out there in the second half, we'll we'll play well, we'll get the win, we'll turn it around, and it'll be great, good times. If anything, we'll get a draw, and that'll be acceptable because I'll I'll, I'll have to take that because we conceded two goals, and once you fall two 0 behind, you're pretty fortunate to win. But it didn't turn out that way. Uh, Vivesha scored a hat trick. Um, Trudori scored another one. The other guy got on the score sheet, Eugene, whatever the hell his surname is, and. Um, I don't think it was help. Basically, Tristan Ferreira got uh, injured in the 45th minute, and the guy I brought on was Luke Emery. Probably should have brought on John Sitar, but I brought on Emery, and he had a shocking game. He was fined a week's wages because I felt, as a youngster, he's only on £80 a week anyway, but as a youngster, the week's wages he'll be fined will be punishment enough. But Luis Saltos had a shocking game. Absolutely shocking. 5.7. So I thought, look, I'll fine you two weeks' wages. All right, I was like, yeah, I'll fine you that amount of wages. Now, I can't actually see... His record for me up to that point is um, his form and stuff. But I, I was like, look, I've had enough of you this year. You've you've let me down on a few occasions. Let's see if I can find an occasion where... So the Fulham game, 6.2 rating was the fault for the goal. Um, Tottenham game, 6.3 rating was at fault for the goal. Um, trying to find another game where he bloody played in. <laughs> 7.6. So, but basically, them, them few bad performances, they stuck in my mind. And all of them, because it's a bit like um, you always remember the bad more than you do the good in terms of performances. So, when a guy has a 9, you think, okay. Or when a guy has an 8 or something, let's say, you think, all right, yeah, he had an 8. You know, even if it's amongst people with 6s and 7s, you think, okay, yeah, 8, that's pretty good. Um, but when someone has a 5.7 and everyone else is on 6s, you think, oh, God, that's shocking. That can't be acceptable. That's my mentality anyway to these things. So, like I said, I find him two weeks' wages. He never played a game after that point. Or actually, he did play a game after that point, but he never started a Premier League game after that point. Um, because I just didn't like him anymore. And like I say, I never really planned to sell him, but I got to around this time, around mid-January, um, because I was just looking at what, what other defenders were out there. And I noticed Ndoye, um Ndoye, whatever his name is, I think. And I was like, yeah, we'll go with him, and we'll get rid of Saltos, and we'll try and get a bit of profit on him, which we did. So uh, after the Newcastle game, we we got the instant reply, something I didn't get from the City match. We won 6-0 against Leicester. Cabba got a hat-trick, Oscar got two, and Parker got one. With a very nice defensive and attacking display. 4-0 against Stoke, so it continued up a nice run. Um, Mbele got two and a brilliant performance from Mbele. Kearns got another goal and Pierce also getting on the score sheet. In the Capital One Cup semi-final, we came up against Liverpool and it started off with a 2-1 win over them at home. Uh, Colin, uh, Corley Kearns getting the goal in the 87th minute to win us the game. Uh, very important, I felt we got, well, I felt it was very important that we got the winner in this match because going into the away game, you don't really want it to be 1-1, hanging in the balance. You want to try and take any advantage you can into that game. With them scoring an away goal, they sort of had an advantage. I know away goals don't really count too much in Capital One Cup football, but, you know, with the away goal, I always thought they had the advantage. So this goal was really important to see go in, and it was great to find, see it go in the back of the net. Really lovely finish from the young attacking midfielder. In between the Liverpool games, we played Burnley, and I rotated the line-up line up again. This was Saltos' last match in, um, with me, um, where he started. Elsewhere, it was just a completely different rotated starting lineup. Thorgan Hazard played in this match. He actually scored and assisted in this game. It was against Burnley. They're in League One now. Very nice, tidy performance, which meant going into the um, second leg of the Capital One Cup semi final, we had a fully fit first team and we put in a brilliant performance. We won 2 1, and it, I think we were helped, obviously, by Jonan Campos's red card in the 44th minute because up to that point, Liverpool were looking pretty good. We weren't looking too great. But, um, yeah, like I said, once the sending off happened and it was 
the game was wide open for us. We scored in the 41st minute, uh, the 46th minute, sorry, of in- and that was injury time in the first half. So 1-1, we were back ahead in terms of aggregate scoreline. So, and plus we rolled out their away goals. That meant Liverpool had to come out and get us. And Liverpool had to score if they wanted to go through. And I think we capitalised on that in the 73rd minute with Kappa yet again scoring. So 2-1, it was game over at that point. But credit to Liverpool, they played pretty well. Probably the best I've seen them play against us this season. So, yep, after that, we turn to the league. West Brom 3-1. Nice, easy, comfortable win for us. Uh, that was the performance I was talking about where we sort of dominated them and the keeper didn't have a great game. Liverpool, to, uh, Tottenham was then... Uh, not Tottenham. Palace was then 2-2 next. This game frustrated me and I think um, the reason we lost this game was because Nathan Pearce was sent off, plain and simple. He was red carded in the 84th minute. Pozo scored in the 88th. I think the man advantage would have... I think the man advantage costed us. So it was simple as that. Anyway, after that, Liverpool played them yet again in the league. Yet again playing Liverpool this season. Beat them 3-1 this time. Harry Kane scored a penalty in the 53rd minute. We were already 1-0 up at that point. Colin Gell came on for a very disappointing John claude Cabra in the, 60, in the 61st minute. And scored five minutes later. And Marcos Parker also got a goal in the 69th minute. So a very dominant display over Liverpool yet again. In the FA Cup 5th round, we played at Norwich. And we won 1-0. John claude Cabra getting the only goal of the game. Yet again, a completely rotated lineup, um, Just getting... You know, our younger players out there and maybe the fringe players, a little bit of time, a little bit of game time. And uh, Cabba ended up coming from the bench because Cabba was, have, as you can see, against um, Liverpool. He didn't play particularly well, 6.2 rating. Hans scored against um, Palace. Didn't play great against West Brom. So I was like, look, he's three games, without, um, three games without a goal. It's probably best we try and give him some minutes in this match. So I brought him on as a sub and he scored the winner. So that was great for him. A bit of a confidence booster. Then QPR came up next. QPR, I think, are like fifth in the table or something. So this was a pretty big game. Two big London teams or great uh, big London teams currently. And uh, to win 4-0, you know, really dominant performance yet again from start to finish for us. It's really, really nice to see us see games when we dominate and we get a scoreline to reflect it. And then recently... We played Besiktas in the Champions League and we won 3-1. They scored in the second minute and I was like, oh, well, first minute technically. It's one of them ones where I get sort of pedantic about. And um, I was like, oh, great. It's, it, it is going to be a shocking um, game from us probably. It's going to be another Real Madrid. But it wasn't. We got a penalty in the 17th minute with Eden Hazard, of whom he converted. We scored two goals in the same minute. Uh, Hazard and Kaba scoring in, like I say, really quick succession. And it was a... Great game, and that's pretty much us through to the Champions League. So, uh, not quarterfinals. This second leg is sort of like the Sevilla match earlier on in the season. It's just sort of a we have to turn up, we have to play for ninety minutes, we have to play half decently, and we'll probably get a, a result. But yeah, Man City today in the Capital One Cup final. Last time we played City in a final, it was the FA Cup final. As made my first season at the club, and we lost that one. One, uh, we lost that one. What, what did we lose it by? Was it one nil? Uh, it was 2-0, so let's hope we can get a better result today. Of course, it's a different manager, and it's probably a little bit of a different team that City have. We have a different team as well, so I'm very confident. Let's run through the starting lineup. So, Couture is in goal, and Day is at right back. Stones, Maurice, and Ferreira are our back four. Pierce is our defensive midfielder, and Belly is our centre mid. Hazard, Oscar, and Parker are our attacking midfielder, and Cabra is up front. Hope is on the bench. Sutar and Bellamy are also our backup defenders. Jim Campbell, Ryan Gould, Kearns are our backup midfielders, and Colin Gell is our backup striker. Let's get into this game. Come on. Chelsea's second home, Wembley. This is our second appearance at Wembley this season. And since I've been here, this is my first, second, um, third, fourth, fifth time at Wembley, I believe, since I've been here. So, uh, yes. Uh, all right, yeah, the club is abundantly clear what's available, what, what's expected of them, and the team are itching to set the record straight. We want to get that victory against Man City after they beat us last time. And there's no better stage than a cup final. Let's do this, Chelsea. Come on. Let's win our second trophy of the season of what could potentially be five trophies. So, starting off, Oscar with a free kick. Can't find a yellow shirt. He's going to get another chance, though. Plays it out wide to Mbele. Parker now. Parker with a goal. Only five minutes into the game, and Marcos Parker has given us the lead. Brilliant, brilliant start from the lads. Absolutely perfect. Couldn't get much better. I mean, the camera angle was a bit crappy, but um, Parker was there. I think Hart's in goal, isn't he? Yeah, Hart's in goal. I thought he was leaving at the end of the season. He might still be leaving. Surprised he's still being selected at his age. Um, anyway, back on the attack we go. And Dei has been really good going forward with the ball. And Dei, I really like that. 
And Belly Hazard is that offside. It might look marginal offside. It's not offside. Hazard's 25th goal of the season. And we take a resounding 2-0 lead in the final so early on. There's still plenty of time for City to get back into this game. But they are not starting in the best way right now. And maybe we'll even get another one. We're pushing very early on and we're starting very quickly. And that's always what you want in a cup final. You start quickly and try and surprise the opposition. As Hazard's chance is kept out by Hart this time. Another good opportunity. It's cleared away by Manchester City. Hazard whipping it in. Can't get it to a yellow shirt. And I think it's going to be end of the highlight. It is. So I'd like this game to tick on a little bit quicker now. A few less highlights as this could be City's first chance. Kevin De Bruyne, ex-Chelsea boy, got the pass originally from Lukaku. Is Bernard too? I couldn't see that guy's name, but Courtois with a very good save. Bernard and Brazilian backup winger. He doesn't actually play for my Brazilian team. He's always on the bench. <laughs> or he preaches sometimes, but he's more of a backup player. So yeah, City had their chance. Here's De Bruyne being brought down by Mbele and hopefully he won't get booked. No, he doesn't. We've injured one of their players as well by mistake. Um, but, you know, who really cares about their players? <laughs> I don't tell them to kick people, but I just, I like hard challenges. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so, I think we're approaching halftime now. And that's great. We're going at halftime 2-0 up. And looks like we could get some revenge on our defeat earlier on in the season. And our defeat in the FA Cup final a few years back. A very great scoreline. Now, Cabba's not having the best of games out there right now. Joe is on the bench and I may bring Joe on. Here is Kappa with the chance and oh my god. He had round the keeper. He's rounded. He rounded the keeper. That's a better sentence there. He's rounded the keeper. But somehow I couldn't get it in. I just, I guess maybe he couldn't put his foot round it. I don't know. But it was an open goal for him and he somehow missed it. Definitely think Kappa might come off later on in this game. And Lukaku goes down the other end and scores for City. So, oh no he doesn't. He's offside. I was just about to say a wasted chance for us. City to get one back. But. Thank God for us, it's offside. Lukaku couldn't time his run and can't time his run still. He'd have thought in-game, after all this time, he'd be managed, he'd be able to do that, but I guess he never learned. So the guy I believe we injured on earlier, early, injured earlier on in the game has had to go off injured now completely. Couldn't play on. Uh, we've got 30 minutes left in this game. And I think I'm going to make that... Oh, I don't actually know. I'm going to make that substitution now. We're going to take Oscar off. We're going to bring Kearns on. Uh, maybe not the substitute you expected, but Oscar picked up a knock, it looked like. We'll just take him off because we've got still got some important fixtures coming up very soon. 2 no up. I don't think it's going to influence the game too much having a youngster in the attacking midfield role. That's why it's relatively easy producing, I think, young attacking players. Because it doesn't really cost your team too much. I mean, they might score a few less goals, but if you've got a solid defence, you can make up for that. Meanwhile, bringing through a young goalkeeper, young defender, you know, their mistakes, they can cost your team a lot. Anyway, Nanday, playing the ball forward. Come find Kaba. Now Kaba's got to go by himself. No support and, you know, he, he did his best. I'm not going to complain about him there. You know, didn't, couldn't really do much more. Another substitution, we're going to take uh, Nathan Pierce off. Not having the best of games. We're going to bring Jim Campbell on for the final. Give Jim Campbell another Chelsea trainee a chance. Here's Oliver for Manchester City. Bobbles along the box and it was very nearly... A goal for City. We're going to make the last change of the game. We're going to bring Colin Gell on. We are going to take Cabra off and give Gell the last five minutes or so of this match to see what he can do and see if he can maybe get a goal, maybe influence the game, but I hardly doubt it. As now seconds are remaining. Kearns, I should really check my Hall of Fame ratings before I do these games. But we've won the Capital One Cup final. Absolutely brilliant. In fact, I can check that as a way around that, I believe. So if I go into the Hall of Fame right now, and I go on to my name. I have 936 points. Go back to the match. Continue to post match. 936. 936. Remember that number in my head so I don't look like a fool. 936. Go on to the Hall of Fame. We have 995 points now. Brilliant. Continentally, we are 816. Nationality, we are now the third best English manager to have ever existed, beating Bobby Robson, Sir Bobby Robson. So, we celebrate a double for this season. I'll do the press conference off-camera. Ferreira wants a new deal. Again, I'll do that off-camera. We qualify for the Europa League, but that doesn't make a difference to me because we're aiming for the Champions League. But yeah, what a confidence boost this will be for my team. Another trophy, another taste of silverware. My, what is that, 17th trophy of my career? Yes, it is. And we've still got, hopefully, a few more to go for. So... Next time I'll meet you back will hopefully be the time we can win the Premier League. Maybe the FA Cup. If we get to a Champions League final, I'll probably give that its own individual separate um, video. But yeah, hopefully we can win a few more trophies this year. 
it'd be great for me to win the Premier League, Champions League and the FA Cup, all three of them. But, you know, sometimes you can't achieve what you want to achieve. Either way, guys, until next time.